everything you see around you links back to the built environment. So for some reason, it seems to be a hidden industry, although socially it affects everything we do and has a greater impact on our well-being and our culture than most people imagine. Hello everyone, my name is Ola Badara and I'm here to talk to you today about a career in the built environment. I'm sure most of you haven't thought about a career in the built environment, so I'm going to tell you what GCSEs or what A-levels you can take to have a successful career in the built environment. So I work as the Director of Property Development Projects for the City of London Corporation. I'm responsible for all the building projects within the city. So I manage a team of construction managers, architects and engineers to deliver these projects. I have a bachelor's degree in architecture, I hold a master's of science in construction management and I have been at the forefront of the construction industry in the UK for over 20 years. Before my appointment to the City of London Corporation, I was the head of property development for a global healthcare provider, Bupa. Whilst there, I delivered a number of hospitals, clinics, offices. So the built environment is the design and construction management of all our human-made surroundings projects can range from building a single home to a large-scale commercial development. So everything you see around you links back to the built environment. So for some reason it seems to be a hidden industry, although socially it affects everything we do and has a greater impact on our well-being and our culture than most people imagine. There are a number of professionals involved in this sector, including engineers, architects, surveyors, lighting specialists, as well as landscape architects. They're urban designers, they're planners. There's so many opportunities within the built environment for a career. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about a few of them. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is architecture. I know most of you are aware of architects and what they do. So I studied architecture and I spent my early years designing railway stations and structures. So an architect's job is to make initial plans for a project, design the building. They work with the civil and structural engineers to ensure these designs are achievable. One of the main challenges of their role is balancing what the building will look like with the engineering solution. For instance, you might create an incredibly beautiful building, but how will it actually stand up? What's the strength of the materials? Well, those, that's where the engineer comes in and works hand in hand with the architect to deliver those beautiful buildings you see. Engineers, you've got your facade engineers, you've got your building services engineers, structural engineer, your lighting engineer, your public health engineer. So imagine yourself in one of the most beautiful buildings in the world. Now take away the light, the heating, the ventilation, take away the lifts, the escalators, the acoustics, the plumbing, power supply. I could go on and on. What would you be left with? An empty shell. And that's no use to anybody. So all the things in the building that make it useful are done by engineers including the structure, which is why the building is standing up. Another career in the built environment is surveying. You have so many types of surveyors. You've got building surveyors, you've got quantity surveyors. I'm going to talk mainly about quantity surveyors and construction managers. So quantity surveyors are an essential part to any construction project. Their role is similar to that of an accountant. So when you ask yourself how much a building costs, that's where the quantity surveyor comes in. They calculate the amount of materials you need to use, when you need to use them, how you can use them, where you get them from at the best price to ensure you have the most economic building you can deliver. And then energy assessors. They're quite new to the industry, but very, very important. Energy saving designs have to be the forefront of where we're going in the world. It's crucial today that we take good care of the planet. And the best way to do that is ensure that our buildings have as little impact on our planet as possible. So you'd like to study architecture. For architecture, you need a degree in architecture. That can either be a Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science. They're two different routes. That would give you what we refer to as your Rebus Part 1. That's your Royal Institute of British Architects Part 1. Then you'd have to do your postgrad, which is usually two years. That would give you a Reba Part 2. And then you'd do your professional practice, which is referred to as Reba Part 3. 
suggested A-level subjects, if you're going down the art route, you need to do art and design, or you can do design technology, English language or English literature. If you're going down the science route, then really need your mathematics and physics. If you'd like a career in engineering, you definitely have to have your maths. So if you're looking for a Bachelor of Science in Structural, Civil, Mechanical or Electrical Engineering, I'll suggest your A-levels or BTEC subjects in Mathematics, Physics, Design Technology. That will put you on a good route to getting your Institute of Chartered Engineers Chartership or Institute of Electrical Engineers. Then finally, Surveying and Construction Management. A BSc in Quantity Surveying and Construction Management is also a good career path. It leads on to the RICS, which is the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. And the suggested A-levels for that route or BTEC subject will be Geography, Economics and Maths. So I said there's so many routes and so many careers within the built environment. I've only mentioned a few. We do look forward to, we do look forward to welcoming you within the built environment. Goodbye.